Thank you. Okay, so for my portfolio speech that I'd like to share with you today, I chose this picture to decorate my portfolio. I chose it because I feel the people in this picture are the academic elite of Clover Park. Not everyone in this picture, just those of you that still remain in the room. I feel we are academic elite because we've come to speech class in pursuant of a degree. We've stayed because our goals are firmly in front of us, we know where we're going, and we've also managed to help each other along the way. And for that, I would like to thank you. <coughs> Gratitude, a cookie comparison, mm -hmm. and some samples of my portfolio. <laughs> when I interviewed a student walking down the hallway, I asked him if he thought it would be appropriate to express gratitude in the workplace. He said he wasn't sure. He was a manly young gentleman, so maybe he didn't think it was manly. So I looked it up. I always thought gratitude was a verb, something you express, something you teach, something you practice, but turns out it's a noun, something you possess. In the book, Gratitude, A Way of Life, the author suggests that gratitude reaps gratitude. So I intend to express my gratitude in hopes to reap some more reasons to be grateful. So Kate, I'd like to thank you for your amazing humor. I have told your story about embarrassing your tweens so many times. I have so much fun with that. And Christy, I really appreciate your reveal of Toastmasters. I always thought that was something that my husband's father and all the scary elders of the church just went to the dark cave because they gave them food or something of that nature. So I really appreciate that. And your example, uh, Alan, of uh, powering through those ums, that will be here for a long time. You're so charming, that was great. And I really appreciate you, Don, sharing your horses with us. I didn't realize how many distinct differences there were in Arabian horses, those were beautiful. And Andy, of course, the rocket, that was a highlight. Appreciate that. <laughs> And Al, your riveting explanation of underwater welding makes me want to get over my fear and scuba dive. And Vanessa, your quiet, secure confidence has been a guiding light for all of us. And Jessica, thank you for showing me how to make lace. I'm going to try to do that for graduation. And Rainy, you are amazingly smiley. No matter what, you always smile. And that's very inspirational to me. And for my fellow Gumbies, I don't even have to ask for help. You guys are always there to help me. And Dr. Vendetti, I would like to thank you for always knowing a little bit about almost everything. And I do mean almost. So I've brought you this so that you'll remember us. So this is Gumby. We're the Gumby. And his friend Pokey. You can watch them on YouTube. Nice. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, remember that. So one thing we found. Okay, I'm not only grateful for all of you, but I'm also grateful for this class. And I'd like to use a cookie comparison to clearly explain that my opinions about public speaking have changed. So I'm going to pass around some fortune cookies. And I believe speech <coughs> class is like a fortune cookie. First of all, it's shape. There are no other classes that I have attended that have U-shaped desks, and they mirror the image of the fortune cookie shape. Also, the flavor. When you see a fortune cookie, there are no chocolate chips, there are no sprinkles. You truly anticipate bland flavor. When I walked into this speech class, it was a little interesting of a classroom, but I really an anticipated a bland experience, and even kind of a frightening one. But what I found is there was a surprise inside, just like a fortune cookie that you can think and have fun, and that life is a bunch of little speeches. Mm -hmm. Some more important than others, like a wedding proposal. And I wanted to thank you for your amazing sweetness. You are solid to the core sweet. Wow. I missed you because you're in the center. That's no, okay. <laughs> Some are more important, <laughs> like a wedding proposal or explaining yourself to your parents or the police when you're in trouble. But all communication is a bunch of little speeches. And in order to speak clearly and more concise, to make a meaningful exchange. And finally, I would like to share a few items from my portfolio. And the first thing is this picture. Oh and this is why this is why I'm here, because I want to be a pharmacy technician. She did not just go there. 
And then I'd like to read just a couple things from my periodic thoughts. On the first day of speech, brought a promise of fun and learning from the instructor, Dr. Vendetti. One would wonder if fun meant watching students squirm and grimace as they reluctantly delivered a clumsy random talk to the class. A lesson was given to us all through the illustration of Mike Miller's dog that each moment in time was unique and must be valued and enjoyed. Again, lending me to wonder who was the receiver of the joy and value. With a big sigh of relief, I left the classroom glad it was over for the day. As with all things, change is imminent. The second day of speech proved to indeed be a different group of people, lending evidence to the theory that each moment in life would be unique. Dr. Vendetti greeted us all and promptly started us on an experience that would change my attitude about the class. By the time I heard him say, all right, we will finish this up tomorrow, I was surprised an hour had passed because I was having fun. I could easily see the value of the time we spent together. And then in humor, I wrote, sometimes you are the bird and sometimes you are the statue. That's true and funny. Even a fool who holds his tongue is considered wise until he opens his mouth and proves otherwise. And one of the gastrointestinal drugs I learned this week is called ass effects. Certainly this is someone's idea of a joke. <laughs> and finally, while listening to a radio broadcast in my car of the fun and silly car talk guys on national public radio, I heard a story of a car that had lost its front wheel suddenly during a trip into town. With sparks flying and the car moving violently forward on its wheel drum, the driver managed to steer the out of control vehicle off the highway into a nearby gas station, missing the building by a narrow margin and coming to the halt right next to the gas pumps. When the employee came running out, the driver simply said, fill her up, <laughs> which I thought was really fun. <laughs> and finally, if you'll indulge me on my evaluation of my first graded speech. Today I viewed my YouTube video of myself. My pharmacy technician teacher, Maureen Simmons at Clover Park, heard about a speech being on YouTube by one of her students and chose to play it in class. Her screen is huge, big. A strange combination of horror and anticipation came over me as I prepared, as I appeared on the largest live screen at the front of the class. I reminded myself that it would only last about five minutes and tried to sit still and wait. What I saw on the screen was a view of an older lady talking about making a quilt. Could that be me? I didn't realize that in the last few years of running from work to home to obligation, that I had aged into someone I did not recognize. I was quite pleased that no one could notice how nervous I felt, even me, Yet I could not get over how I looked. Somehow my outsides have raced past my insides. When exactly did this happen, I thought. As I sat down at my desk that night to write what I intended to be a review or summary of my speech, the skills taught in the class, and the areas for improvement, all I can see is who is staring back at me. Since I arrived at Clover Park over a year ago, taking the compass test three times just to qualify for the pharmacy technician program, I have changed. I belong to a new tribe now one that values learning and knowledge over how much I can lift or how fast I can produce. What I have learned from my first speech in Dr. Vendetti's class is that I have grown older, wiser, and more open to the possibilities in life. I have learned that you are never too old to learn, learning can happen to anyone, and that I am a better person with more to offer for what I have learned. And in conclusion, I've opened my portfolio with gratitude, a cookie comparison, and some sample pages, and I'd like to leave and finish with a quote. In the book, Building Business Success, on page 75, a box quote reads, if in the last few years you haven't discarded a major opinion or acquired a new one, check your pulse, you may be dead. <laughs> <laughs>